Hi guys, this is Blake Anderson, and in this video I'm going to describe to you how I created three types of maps in GLayers 3 in After Effects. So the first map is a flyover from Lake Ontario into Toronto, and so I'm going to describe to you how I created that map. And the second map is actually a 3D layer of Niagara Falls. And so I'm going to describe how using Trap Code Mirror and also GeoLayers 3 and After Effects, uh, you can create a 3D uh, landscape. And then the third one is basically an animation between two locations. So in this case, from Toronto to Saskatoon, like a transportation map, basically from two locations. Hi guys, so I'm in After Effects and this is the composition that I created for Niagara Falls and creating a 3D layer with a camera that both rotates and the, um, you know, the rotation of the map as well. So I'm going to show you how I created this in uh, GeoLayers 3. So I have GeoLayers open and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close GeoLayers, I'm just going to reopen it. And so just to start anew, so I'm clicking GeoLayers 3 and when I open it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create 3D landscape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it, uh, in this case, uh, Niagara Falls. Let's say Niagara Falls 3D map. And then I'm going to keep 1920 by 1080. You, you could go also up to 4K if you wanted, but uh, for this one, I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080. And then in texture size, I'm going to click 10 to, uh, 24 pixels. And then I'm going to click trap code mirror three. So once I click on that, I basically it creates a composition. And now the next key is, is it's basically to figure out these uh, basically two things is you have the camera cameras. So that's something I'll explain to you in a bit. But then you also have mirror and mirror three. And basically you have the location of the map. So the first thing to do is to figure out um, to set the location. So we're looking to get Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls location. And you know, you, you can definitely choose your own uh, location, but for this example, I'm gonna use Niagara Falls. So what I'm gonna do is in the, you know, the search here, is I'm gonna click Niagara Falls. And I'm obviously gonna click the Ontario because I'm Canadian. So um, I'm gonna click on this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna generate the Niagara Falls map. And now I guess the next option is to figure out you know, how much you want to zoom in or how much you want to be zoomed out. But for this um, example, I'm going to zoom in a fair bit because obviously, you know, you want to see the falls. So I'm going to zoom in overlooking Niagara Falls and actually just zoom in even a little bit more. Um, you know, I think that's a good, good shot there. And what next step then, so now I have the location, right? And I guess this is just, you know, your own individual um, interest, but um, basically you can rotate the cameras. So, you know, I definitely, you know, you can just basically go through transform and you can just play around with, I would say the, the rotations, right? I guess the next step is to add different aspects to the map. And this is kind of the more complex, more advanced step. But what you can do is you can click on here, you go add feature to browser. So what this does is that, you know, it's this is where, you know, GeoLayers 3 is quite impressive. But what you can do is you can download features. So what this does is that, um, you know, it accesses a database of um, map data on the internet. And what you can do is uh, add that to the map. So let's just take an example here that I, let's say I want to uh, color the, just the lake. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on here and let's say I want to keep it this color, so uh, like a light blue. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on lake, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to do draw features, draw feature. So what that does now is it's added water, the, the color of blue, to the water of this map, which is quite, you know, this is a, this is a, like a significant step, right? And I definitely can, you know, do more advanced things. That's what I'm kind of looking forward to doing. But for this example, I'm just showing, I get, you know, basically from the example that I've learned as well, is just to add data that's sourced from the internet uh, to the map. And obviously there's a lot of more potential to this. But for this video, I'm just, you know, setting up kind of more of a, uh, a more straightforward, a simple example. But, you know, just to suggest to you that 
there are many possibilities of what you can do in terms of animating the map using real world data. The thing is you want to make this water maybe less, um, right now it doesn't look necessarily the most, uh, what would I say, pleasing to the eye. Uh, so the key step here is to, what you want to do is I, I want to get to the color of the water so that I can change the color and just create a different uh, blend layer. And so in order to do that, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click on texture. And that's what allows me to uh, go to the lake here feature. And I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to change the blending mode. And I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. And so this is going to allow some of those features from the map to uh, blend with that color. And so now I'm going to go back into the height. And again, you know, you can animate the map using various markers. For this example, I'm just going to, you know, let's just say you create a marker here in terms of rotation. This is using the X camera. Uh, rotation of the rotation X camera and let's say just you know I want to make a little bit of elevation here like that you know so it's going to animate with that right and so I would say be subtle with it but uh, that's just my um, suggestion uh, you could create a you know a bit more of a motion blur effect and click that on but that's an example of basically how you can rotate a 3D map and adding various aspects to the map as well. In this case, we added color to the water. And I guess one aspect left is to add, what I can do is I can put a label. So in terms of this basically will give us data from the location. And what I want to do is I want to create a label in terms of um, an animation that basically what I'm going to do is so what I'm going to do is going to add a label here. So I clicked on Niagara Falls here, right? I believe the second one is probably the Canadian version. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add label. So what that does, it's, you know, it basically has added a label to the map. And this animates within the animation. You know, you can uh, change when it occurs, but, um, you know, you can play around in this label to different, um, you know, scales and different positions that you want that map uh, to, uh, sorry, that label to be located. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically how you can add a label. And, you know, again, this is another feature that, you know, let's say you wanted to add a name for a different location. And there's different ways that you can play with this. But um, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So that is how you create a 3D layer in Niagara, using Niagara Falls map uh, and how you can use this uh, for your own videos. All right, guys, I'm going to show you this really cool video of this animation that I created from overlooking Lake Ontario that zooms into Toronto. So what this does is it zooms into Toronto as it zooms in, it animates the map and then it highlights High Park. And you can just see that all the different features of you know, the street numbers, also the neighborhoods. It's it's really cool effect, right? And so how to create this map? How do you do this? And it's actually quite simple. So you can see here, geo layers is open. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new map comp. And then I'm going to name this, let's say here, I'm going to name it High Park. And I'm going to make it in a, you know, 4K. And what I did is create uh, frame 24 frames per second and I made it duration 15 seconds. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click next. So then it gives you the option of the, basically the, um, the different kind of uh, themes that you want to uh, uh, select. So in this case, I selected this, uh, I guess what's called uh, Stamman design effect. And then, so what you're going to do is click create. And so basically I have this map and now you basically, what you can do, you have two things that you need to solve here. I think is that you need to first figure out the location. So, you know, so in this case, I'm going to click obviously Toronto. So I'm going to zoom into Toronto and that's the first step is so get, getting your location, which is just super easy, right? All I have to do is zoom in and find your location. And I want to zoom in a little more. 
so I think I had it about, let's say, there. And this is zoomed in a little bit here, like my count cops a little bit. Um, I think I can do it actually a little bit more. So let's say like here. And that's where I would start it, right? And as this map animates, um, you are going to, like here, you can create keyframes. And so what I would do is I would start the map probably at about this, um, you know, this setting. And then I'm going to zoom the map in, let's say at about around seven seconds. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in in this uh, case into High Park. And once I get High Park, let's say, I, want, I still want to see a little bit of the lake. So this is going to look much better when you actually set it in, like you render it. So once you set the, the location that you want to zoom into uh, using the keyframes, what you can do is also you can change the bearing and the pitch. So you can set keyframes at the beginning in terms of uh, the bearing and the pitch. So let's just say it's zero, right? Both zeros. And then as this zooms in, you can see that it changes both the bearing and the pitch. And that's just a really cool effect in terms of uh, changing the elevation and the rotation of the map as you zoom in, just creating a cool effect. So that's how you can create very easily a map, zooming into a map and a given location. It's very endless and um, really cool animation that you can create uh, very simply in GeoLayers 3. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how I made a map between two locations. And in this example, I use Saskatoon to Toronto. And so what you wanna do is you want to find your two locations first. So you're gonna search them and basically you're gonna write Saskatoon for the first one and then you're gonna download to browser, or sorry, add to browser. And then you're gonna do the same thing, Toronto. And once you get Toronto selected, you're gonna um, add it to browser. So now you have two locations. And now the key is to link the two locations together so they can create an animated uh, route. Once you have both of them selected, you're going to click the feature that you connect the two features. So that's down here below. You click that connect features and then you click car. And so what that do what that's going to do is going to generate a route and you're going to delete these um, other maneuvers. And you're just going to keep this um, this uh, route here. And you're going to animate feature path. So that's what it does is it creates a, an animation between those two locations. And then the next step is to creating the views between those two locations. And I think there is a way to, to actually follow the um, route. Uh, but for this example, I, I basically just customize it to myself, um, for myself meaning I started close to Toronto, I zoomed into Toronto, and then I did an animation using keyframes, zooming from Toronto back to Saskatoon. And so again, this is just a, kind of a start of me using these two maps. So I will explore more of this topic in future videos, but for this one, I just wanna quickly give you a quick example of how I created those two, two um, uh, connect those two routes together. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.